We're going to go to Tim Graham, but first let's watch this. You lose an opportunity to persuade people that you are a strong leader. That's in my opinion. Well, I understand your opinion, Bill, but tomorrow night at 9 o'clock at Drake University, we're going to have a tremendous event, and I'll have much more than 60 seconds, frankly, and we're going to raise a lot of money for the veterans. And don't forget, folks, I will be back at 9 o'clock Eastern tonight, a couple of hours from now, and we will bring you Donald Trump's event live right here on Newsmax Television. Joining us now is Tim Graham, Director of Media Analysis at the Media Research Center, Executive Editor of Newsbusters.org. Tim, welcome uh, to this, uh, this uh, first installment of uh, Molesburg's Media Madness. And I got to tell you, it couldn't have been, I mean, you're in the A block and you're in the A block because I got to tell you, I've never seen anything like this, certainly not from O'Reilly. I thought he was, you know, pathetic when he interviewed Barack Obama during the Super Bowl, but he was literally begging Donald Trump to come to this debate tonight. It's, um... The whole fight over this, where one side says the other side's like the Iranian Ayatollahs, it's it's kind of a mess. And uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, in one sense, Trump is right, maybe in two senses. And that is, the debate doesn't need him, and he doesn't need the debate. Uh, you know, the idea with, with that, that Bill was suggesting, which was he needs to appear in dignified settings, I think that he's made it quite clear He's dignified isn't his modus of working, <laughs> you know? So uh, he's probably thinking in his brain, well, the debate's going to be totally boring without me. I, I, I think if you watch the last couple debates, Trump has sort of like fallen out of the middle of them. Like he, he's not holding the center of the stage, you know? I think the more specific they get about policy, the more uncomfortable he gets. So you... You know, yeah, I, but I think the I think the viewers still tune in to see him, and I I don't know how many other you know I don't know how many networks are going to be showing this uh, alternate event at Drake tonight like we are, but I bet the ratings combined for that compared to the debate ratings uh, after after the first fifteen twenty minutes of the debate anyway I think are going to he's going to beat them. Well, and this is where you begin to say, is he really running for president or is this just a perpetual exercise in self-aggrandizement? Well, I think, I think he's running for president. Uh, you know, it's, he's come a long way to not be running for president. But let me, let, let me go back to the journalistic uh, or the, you know, the, the integrity aspect of this. Um, O'Reilly asked him, you know, please come to the debate. Would you change your mind? And I want you to hear, you know, how Trump responded. Listen. Well, even though you and I had an agreement that you wouldn't ask me that, which we did, uh, I will therefore forget that you asked me that. But it's up to Fox. <laughs> it's not up to me, Bill. They, what they did You're is actually they told the did. truth. We had there. that agreement. You actually, you actually did break you the actually agreement. You're actually telling the truth that I said. So, because I told I you said, up front, I said, don't ask me that question because it's an embarrassing and of course, I'm question not listen, to you. And but I don't I'm not going to listen you. to anybody. Right. But I'm not going to listen to any political person tell me don't ask me anything. But you're absolutely an honest man. Then I said, I, I'll try not to do it, but the milkshake thing just overwhelmed me. All right. So he admits they had an agreement. And then he comes on and says, yeah, I might have agreed, but I'm not going to let anybody like you tell me what I could say. Well, then you should have said that before the interview. And then maybe you wouldn't have had the interview. Yeah, I mean, I, there has been this series of please from Fox to have him come on and and at some point it does begin to suggest you know look have the independence to say we don't need to have you here um, we're not afraid of having a debate without you I think that they should suggest that they should you know, take the experiment it's a wild experiment let's have a debate without Trump and see if it how it goes yeah, just, interesting. For, yeah. just for something new well, they certainly didn't do that. All right, before we go, I want to, there was a March for Life this past weekend, and a viewer to, the, uh, to, to Newsmax Television alerted us to the media coverage of that event and how it was a lie. They were there, and uh, they took pictures, and here's some, here's some pictures. I don't know if this is necessarily the pictures they took, but it was well attended despite the horrific snow and weather, and uh, the media misrepresented it. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, they used numbers like hundreds appeared. Well, when you say hundreds, you're generally suggesting less than a thousand. 
there were clearly anybody looking at the picture is going to see there's more than a thousand people there, uh, and maybe two thousand, maybe three thousand, et cetera, et cetera. But this is what they tend to do. They want to dismiss this as an insignificant event with no political impact. And what's fa and they do it every year at this time. And what's fascinating is just a few weeks ago, the uh, the amnesty lobby had a march with less than a hundred people. Uh, that started at the Democratic National Committee headquarters and ended at the White House. And the Post, Washington Post treated like it, it was a very <laughs> big deal. Like they only, you know, if you if you're for the right cause, right. you get seventy people to show up, and you're a big deal. Absolutely, Tim. Great to talk to you, my friend. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tim Graham, ladies and gentlemen. Check out NewsBusters.org and the Media Research Center as well.